I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just short as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. It just does. Clear. It it's... does. We're doing our Thanksgiving episode. I mean, it's after Thanksgiving. I mean, time is a man-made construct. Like, what is Tuesday? Yeah, well... Some guys decided you know 200 years ago that it was tuesday and everybody just remembered 200 years ago yeah i think tuesday as a concept has existed longer than 200 years personally but the earth is I mean, only 200 i, I don't years have old, any John. proof of that what the, the earth is only 200 years old well i don't know what theology that exists in because that would that would that would mean that the birth of america hadn't happened yet um Actually, for all I know, the Earth is only 29 years old, and it, everyone just blinked into existence. So your wife blinked into existence at tw when you were 29, when you were born? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, nothing existed until I was born, and then everything came into existence in the state that it was 29 years ago. And just moved I mean, forward from then. So, like, in, in that then sense... Then I'm that a guaranteed real existence in that case. Yeah, yeah, you, your existence is real only so long as that I can observe it. Uh, I hate everything about what you're saying. <laughs> uh, I hate this. This is like, this right here is like my kryptonite when it comes to stuff like this because I hate discussing like perceptions of reality because mm -hmm. I spent so much of my high school days having near panic attacks about my perception of reality yeah. so thank you thank you for re reviving <laughs> old john scars oh you're welcome i just can't it's wait very till appreciated until the cowboy hat comes out god it's not i don't even think it's a cowboy hat it's like a beach hat it doesn't really have a purpose <laughs> it, it's just one of those hats that you can pick up at, at like a fucking um like a beach because like it was i got it from like wildwood so wildwood or some like jersey shore ass place yeah <laughs> um so yeah i did a weird thing the day that so i have a story about when i got that hat okay um i had become obsessed with the concept of drawing a comic like a web oh, comic i thought you were gonna say indiana jones but continue no, I was already obsessed with Indiana Jones. Um, I got obsessed with drawing a webcomic. And I was on vacation, and I actually stayed in the hotel room while my family went out our, on the boardwalk because okay. I wanted to draw. I mean, that is a very John thing to do. Yeah, yeah. It, it, was, it was interesting. It was very interesting for John. Uh, although I was also like... 16 so that's like the age where you do weird shit yeah just you do you just do weird shit because you have affectations and all that stuff um i don't want to get too deep into it first though because there is a correction that i did say i would make okay uh to davy crockett oh yeah and, and you've got to list your new favorite president my new favorite president mm-hmm I, he's not my favorite president. I actually, I don't think I like any president. Davy Crockett for president. Well, okay, so he's dead. Died at the Alamo. That that actually that, happened. That, that um, automatically makes him good. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't exist as a living creature anymore. So that, that definitely is a good thing. Because mm -hmm. um, he can't fuck things up more. Uh, well, apparently, he's less problematic than I thought. Um, I did look through some of his beliefs and his opinions and stances, and I couldn't find really a whole bunch of dog shit awful stuff. Uh, so he also voted against the legislation that would lead to the trial, the trail of tears. So, uh, he's still an old white man. Yeah. I still say but... anyone born in sepia tone times is, is no bueno. Well, any I, I especially say any white person born in sepia times 
is no bueno. But he gets a pass. He gets a pass for me. But the person who doesn't get a pass is Andrew Jackson. Fuck that guy. Get him off the 20. I don't care anymore. Thank you, Lemwood, for bringing this up. He is still on the 20, isn't he? We should he probably still can is we on just the replace 20. everyone with, like, Trigun characters on all our, our, our dollar bills. You would be the only one who would want Trigun characters to replace everyone on our dollar bills. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then we can call them double dollars. It's going to be amazing. Oh, my God. I hate everything that you're saying right now. Yeah. Oh, my God. You and your fucking love of Trigun. I do love the show. It's a very good show. You've, you've read the manga, too, haven't you? All the manga and the show and... The movie. The movie. Yeah. Badlands just, Rumbles. Mm-hmm. And it was all yeah. good. God. Badlands Rumble was a little bit weird. I mean, it's, but that, it's an anime it was, movie. It, <laughs> it's an anime movie. They're generally kind of weird. Because uh, it was it was set at some point in the series, which is... It's kind of weird to do that with a series that has a very clear ending. Yeah, to make a movie that's just somewhere in the middle of how you already know everything's going to end. Yeah, so it's it's there's no stakes whatsoever as a result, nope. and you know there are no stakes. You know that none of the main characters are going to die, um, so it, it makes things really weird. I'll give... So, this is going to be me tooting my favorite series horn. Okay. The Eureka 7 movies are a little different in that they take place in alternate timelines. <laughs> so... Is that some just ass covering right right up front? Uh, well, there is multiple timelines in Eureka 7 as like a part of the existence of the series, and it's a very cerebral series in that because they have the hard and throbbing yeah. pr- principle at like front and center where... Things are going to be resemble humans because humans exist. <laughs> so because we can observe it and we exist to observe it, things are going to be naturally a little human centric mm-hmm. because we actually exist. That's the anthropic principle where it's like because humanity is there. Stuff. stuff yes. Um, that reminds me of something else, though. Yes. Because I am full of tangents this week. Uh, we also we have to talk about we have to talk about fa- phasmophobia as a rule. But I first oh, want to we'll talk about something. We'll discuss phasmophobia, and then I also want to discuss about s- something that I already told you about a little bit, and that's the introduction of real anime to <laughs> and their and their reaction to it. Okay, okay. So real quick, uh, I watched Over the Moon last weekend, okay. which is a animated feature about uh, Chinese folklore. Uh, and Philippa Su, the person who plays Eliza in Hamilton, yeah, uh, also voices Chang'e, the moon goddess, in Over the Moon. Oh, okay. And I looked that pronunciation up several times to make sure that I was remembering it correctly. Uh, so the only thing I could think while watching that movie was that, like, Hamilton meme where it's it's Eliza doing the beatboxing and the yeah. sub ca- the caption says beatboxing maternally. <laughs> <laughs> like that was the only thing I could think of the whole time I watched that movie. The whole time. Oh man. Oh, I did finish Parasite by the way, and it got weird at the end. It got real weird because it tr- they tried to turn it into like a narrative about humanity when the entire rest of it was just like cool stuff in arms turning into things that aren't arms? I'll argue it was a narrative about humanity the whole time, but we'll agree to disagree. Yeah. And, and so so I decided to, on Thanksgiving, while the turkey was, was uh, roasting, to show Erica, to actually have her, like, she's observed me watching anime, because I'll watch Parasite. I like to watch that before I go to bed. Um, mm-hmm. So I figured, oh, what's a good one with a really strong narrative? And I thought, Attack on Titan. Now, anytime she's observed me watching it, it's because she's playing games on her phone and looks up or whatever, never, like, really, you know, pays attention to the narrative. So we get to the point where uh, Aaron's mom is trapped under a building and a titan is walking towards her. And mm-hmm. she she goes, oh, no, she's not going to get hurt, is she? And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, I might have made a mistake. And then, like, 
she gets torn apart and eaten alive and you get to watch all of it. And then, but she was like holding her hand up at the TV and looking away. She's like, Brandon, Brandon, make a stop. I was like, what? She goes, the most violent cartoon I've ever seen before this was The Lion King. And I was like, oh, I might have uh, overshot a little bit then. Was she the person in our our showing of 47 Ronin who said, they're not going to kill themselves, are they? No. <laughs> no, but I wouldn't be surprised. That's some energy. That's the same yeah. level of energy yeah. as that. Because I will never, as long as I live, forget that gasp in the crowd Oh yeah, 47 Ronin. <laughs> the one person and who was surprised. It was like... Well, but the thing is, it was. It, it's at the end of the movie. It's a what hour and a half ish, ish two yeah. hour movie. It's a two hour and eight minute movie, right? Yeah. There is so much shit happening in that movie, and they already explain at the beginning of the movie that they're probably going to have to perform ritualistic suicide. Yes, like they explain it at the front. So I guess there's a trigger warning for you. I probably should have trigger warning that first, but anywho. Uh, the, 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 like, the, the sheer audacity of a person to be like, oh, are they going to do that? <laughs> they, they're sitting, they, they have swords in front of them. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing too is in regards to Erica's response, that's amazing. Oh yeah. You need to introduce her to Dead Man Wonderland in which there is what I would describe as a blood tornado. <laughs> uh, and Primal by Gendy Tarkarski, the guy who did Dexter's Lab and Samurai yeah. Jack. So I, I, I told my sister the exact same thing I just told you, and the text I got back was, she goes, oh shit, that's fun. Tokyo Ghoul next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's so many good ones that, that yeah. she could you, could, you could torture her with. Oh, yeah, Psychopaths is probably good. Psychopaths, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Elfin lied. Oh, uh, Puella Mad- Madoka Magica. Do that <laughs> one because here's the thing. For a while, spoilers for Puella Madoka Magica. It seems cutesy. Yeah. Uh, and then someone's head gets literally bitten off. <laughs> a character you're not expecting yeah. to get their head bitten off. Oh, um, um, Promise Neverland doesn't start off crazy, but uh, goes crazy. Promise Neverland is another good violent one. Um, yeah, that would be a good one. That would be an absolutely phenomenal yeah. one. Yeah, there's just so many. And some, like, I, I never actually finished Tokyo Ghoul, so I was like, oh, I should probably go finish Tokyo Ghoul. There's a lot where I'm like, oh, I should probably go finish that. Uh, you're going to be not... In a, you're not going to be married anymore at the end of this, though, you realize. Yeah, but I will have up. finished all the series that I didn't finish. So is uh, it really a loss? <laughs> I, that's for you to decide, <laughs> not me. Uh, I'm just looking through my list of uh, things that could be potentially horrifying. Monster uh, you Masume can watch Darling in the Franks. Way. You can watch Darling in the Franks. That's just utterly sexual, like to the point of kind of disturbing <laughs> ooh ooh Yamishibai they're horror stories they're really short too they're like 13 minutes a piece yeah I don't I haven't seen that that's actually pretty good some of the first season's real good it gets hit or miss after that okay. uh, let's see I'm going through Crunchyroll right now um, oh I was good oh Akamiga Kill that's a good one a I lot of people actually, die in that actually good I will say um, that most of the ones that we've been listing are actually good Berserk, also that's good. super violent. Uh, like Kill, Killer uh, B is good. I, Killer B, yeah. I haven't seen Killer B yet. Um, let's see. We're just listening anime at this point. Yeah. Welcome to the this show. What's happened? What was the other thing you want to talk about? Because oh, I'm going to keep listing my, anime. I got my push to talk uh, working on. Uh, I don't know if it's working because I haven't tried it, but I installed Discord on the computer. Yeah. And have it set the push to talk. So I've I've got that going for me now. Oh yeah, phasmophobia. We're gonna talk about that, Brandon. Trying to get you to set up push to talk on phasmophobia or set up mute like mute toggling on phasmophobia 
was what I would describe as a religious experience for me. Well, you're welcome. Not in the positive way, though. Because <laughs> I, I think we spent 14 minutes. Uh, longtime listener of the show, Clay, was there trying to understand your Discord setup. Yeah. And it was like at minute 13 that you finally elucidated to us that you had been using web discord the whole time yeah and we were trying to explain how to do it on desktop discord to you the whole time which is similar like they're subtly different in the menu layout which is what the root of the problem was well uh, on top of that they have different feature sets as well yes um it was really funny and so we played a little bit offline like and by offline, I mean not streaming, because Clay streamed us playing, and there's a video that's in the Discord of that, and it's actually pretty funny. Um, but we played a little offline, and the first time that a ghost appeared to you, your scream was so <laughs> genuine and so utterly terrified. It was absolutely magical, and I wish I had a recording of it. <laughs> It's I don't play horror games, and uh, for a very good reason. But this was it's it's an actual fun spooky game. Like yeah, I well, actually enjoy Phasmophobia. It's like Guess Who, but like Guess different. Boo. Guess Boo. It's Guess Boo. Guess Boo. Yes, I actually really enjoy it. I think it's a really fun game. Um, I I'm excited to see what improvements they make to it. Because, like, what's there already is a really compelling experience. Um, it's a little formulaic, but not that bad. Because there's, like, a degree of, like, you have to problem solve and figure out where the thing is and yada, yada, yada. Sometimes the game glitches, too, and the ghost is, like, all weird and wonky and wobbly. Uh, which, honestly, for me... Kind of makes the experience more fun because you're not sure if the ghost is being a glitchy bitch or uh, something else. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also got you killed. Yeah, <laughs> and you started <laughs> you started negotiating with the ghost to get us killed. At that point, I was trying to build a relationship, a really good foundation in which I would be able to complete all of the, the game's objectives while leaving you two assholes in the dust. And then I get on the truck and collect all the money because of my friend, the ghost. Uh, that didn't work out, though. <laughs> I don't even know if we actually figured out what ghost that was. Like, what kind of ghost that was. I don't because know. Because it was, like, literally giving us so much shit that, like, <laughs> we just kind of stopped. <laughs> but, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Phasophobia is fun. We'll Indeed probably play again in the future. We'll probably, I'll probably stream it the next time I'm playing. I guess I don't know. Watch my Twitter. Yeah, all that no, shit. that's a good game. Um, so with all of that under our belt, welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we'll take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John. And this week is a. Uh, a continuation, continuation of uh, two episodes ago. It's Black Bunk Part 2. Yeah, it was our Halloween episode. The yeah. Halloween episode that was after Halloween. It was the Halloween episode. In the episode. same way that this is the Thanksgiving episode after Thanksgiving. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly the same. Exactly the same. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the problem with a fortnightly schedule, which I realize is what we're on. Yeah. Uh, that is the problem with a fortnightly schedule. But I also literally could prob I probably could never do an a weekly schedule again in my life. <laughs> that was mind boggling. That like that that's... I can't believe we lasted a year doing weekly. Which was crazy. The level of it was like getting as soon as you get home from work you sit down and start doing job number two. Yeah, yeah. No, it's fun. It's fun fortnightly, but weekly, it's like job two. Yeah, we, yeah, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 
So, uh, Black Monk Part 2. Indeed. Where did we leave off again? It was, uh, let's see. I'm it, looking at the notes. Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I start the cop, this copy wrapping up uh, last copy. So, what happens is, it's, in summary, 1966, a family was haunted by a poltergeist. Um, it began rather benign, but then uh, it turned into a snake made of wallpaper. The daughter is almost never brought up in the story, and eventually they decide to have an exorcism where we left off. They invited the neighbors and a priest over for some tea and sandwiches before attempting to expel the uh, the spirit. And you said so you like, can't like, see it. Like, um... Oh, yeah, I got... I, there's, so, there's one more button for me to click. It should be in there now. <laughs> um... So yeah, it was very. Uh, I think we. I called the episode "What About Diane?" Yeah, because she just disappeared from the story. Um, so yeah, this, this is a. This is exactly what I expect out of one of the most infamous poltergeist stories ever, uh, and by that I mean it's mundane as shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think it came out in how I wrote the the uh, after the first few pages. Um, the, 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 it just it's just clear, probably just m- me. You can read my contempt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I have been experiencing your contempt. Yeah. Uh, secondhand for the past month or so, as you read this story and work on this story. Uh. <laughs> Some of the t- some of the text messages that I've got have just been so angry about. It's literally the, the exact Monk- same Monk- thing Monk- happens over and over again, but in a different room. So what I'm trying to do, with, like, I just elim- I I did read the whole thing. I kept in whatever seemed new and different. But if it was something that was identical to something that happened before, the number of sandwiches that this ghost eats. <laughs> In what? different rooms. Wait, what? And, and like, <gasps> the, and the same thing with the like, the same exact thing happens, but instead of a chair on this corner of the room, was the chair in that corner of the room, and uh, nothing verifiable. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> the number of sandwiches this ghost eats. You might think he's a misogynist on the internet. <laughs> Uh, so at this point in time, uh, the gang is all in the kitchen, and Mr. Davy then drops that poltergeists cannot be exercised, uh, and that one of Alan Kardec's friends told him that exorcisms are treated with contempt, so more or less just kind of uh, piss them off. So that's that's new to me. That's a new a new thing. I didn't read that either, because I feel like that happens in a lot of poltergeist movies. Well, not... No, like not even that. Like, you can absolutely exercise a poltergeist in some traditions. Like, yeah, but wh- this is tra- their English, in- their English, uh, English religion. Anglican. Yeah, I mean that's the that's the Church of England is the state religion still. I think question mark. Uh, I actually don't know if that's true. It was. Uh, but so like. What a weird thing to say authoritatively, right? Like, oh, you can't, you can't, you can't, uh, that's a terrible, terrible accent. I'm not going to do it. Uh, oh, you, you, you can't... should hear Erica's Irish accent. It is at best, uh, <laughs> at best, uh, I mean, I can't do accents. Imagining so... an, an English person with a broken jaw. <laughs> it's supposed to be Irish. <laughs> um, the other weird thing is like there's the guy that's supposedly the exorcism expert and he's being overridden by somebody's friend said something once Pro- professing faith how do priests deal with poltergeists oh, are, are we doing some real research now <laughs> yeah so Huh. In the uh, mythological traditions of the West, poltergeists are not to be confused with ghosts. Uh, And I... Are not to be confused with ghosts. Most stories of ghosts present the beings as spiritual remains of dead people. They resemble them and can talk like them. A manifestation of ghosts is something, 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 whatever. Basically, so I guess apparently ghosts are different. Anglican priest exercises poltergeists for Muslim family. There's an article right there. I just found one in which someone did it. 
an okay. Anglican priest, nonetheless. All right, problem solved. Uh, Alan Kardec's friend is full of shit. Um, so far, uh, it would appear that the vicar's presence has kept the ghost at bay because <clears throat> he had not done anything for about an hour and a half and nothing weird happened for that period of time. Uh, he then checked his watch and said, well, time to be going home. So he just fucks off. Um, for some reason, I guess you can't uh, exercise a spoopy man if he's not actively spooping. And that meaning, like, the, if the poltergeist isn't actively doing something, but you still know it's there, would you not be able to at least exercise it if it's not actively... Or do, is it just, like... He well, you goes gotta get away. it a treadmill. Yeah, does he just like leave for a while? And no, goes... you got you have to get it a treadmill. That's the oh, way you exercise that the poltergeist. Ha 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 ha. You get a you get a treadmill. You get some of those running weights. Uh, you gotta buy it a, a Fitbit or something, some kind of uh, thing to track its uh, a boop a whoop uh, a boop to to track its uh, heart rate that doesn't exist. Because you gotta get it, you gotta make it shed those pounds and just shed itself away. <laughs> it's like that one ghost from like Halloween Town or something, where they they're in the 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 sweat machine and they sweat all their body weight away. It's just what you gotta do. You just gotta make it exercise so much that it ceases to exist from the weight loss. That's <laughs> that tracks. That's the correct way to exercise a ghost. Exorcist. That's the correct exorcism style for a ghost. Exercise. <laughs> Homophones. <Yay>! Fuck English. <laughs> uh, Gene then replied, uh, I'm sorry we've dragged you all this way for nothing. And then as if uh, written uh, into a plot, uh, the priest's eyes roll to the back of his head and his nose begins to bleed. And then he keels over dead. Um, he apparently had a major cranial ectoaneurysm. Uh it's an aneurysm. Yeah, that, that that it's one of it's one of Archer's greatest fears. Yeah, and then actually, it could happen anywhere. I to anyone. I made that up. Uh, what they claimed oh. to have really happened was that a loud thump- thumping came from the floor above, and a candlestick fell over. Brandon, why did you do that? <laughs> I was making. I was making. I mean, on the plus side, you prevented me from making even worse jokes about a man dying. That, that was. How quickly my disdain to, to that I still had to read this was was coming out that like a thump and a candlestick fell over the whole book is like thump candlestick thump sandwich like it it's it's just it's just very repetitive it's poorly written uh the priest looked at the candlestick and said I think I know what your problem is subsidence and now, uh, subsidence is the gradual caving or sinking of an area of land. So even the priest who's there to exercise the ghost, he's like, I know what your problem is. The ground is shifting on you. I mean, that's the, a mundane explanation. Yeah, even the exorcist is saying it's it's just natural causes. Also, I looked up subsidence and like most of the hits for it are from England. Like... <laughs> Yeah, like, it's so common that the priest was like, I know what your problem is. So that's... Yeah, yeah. And then again, as if written for TV, Mrs. Pritchard said that subsidence can only make things fall and, uh, and then, you know, ellipses, the candlestick starts to float and it travels to the vicar's nose and then falls to the floor. Uh, (laughs) paraphrasing, uh paraphrasing what mrs pritchard said was uh what now bitch and uh a humongous but, crash came from the next room why okay this is like a really poorly written for tv movie it, because that's, it's that's how the whole thing reads because like like that is something that you would expect to happen in if, a poorly written tv show yeah because it's like it's like well, subsidence can only explain things falling. Woo, 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 woo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you can see the string in your mind, like, a recreation of this scene. I, I hear a theremin playing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, scattered on the floor was every cup, plate, and piece of dishware from the china cabinet. However, none of them were broken. 
Uh, well, that is a that is a considerate poltergeist. Or they just really liked Pyrex. That too. Uh, this finally changed the vicar's mind, causing him to say that there was definitely something evil in the house and encouraged them to move. And then he just left. I mean, to be fair, I don't think a vicar gets paid a whole heck of a lot. Probably not. Like, this is beyond his pay grade. Yeah, yeah, like, but like, also like, kind of screw that guy because he's an exorcist. And first he's like, I'm leaving. There's no ghost. And then he's like, definitely a ghost. I'm going to scoop. I mean, he just wanted to leave. There's, you know what happened? He, he got his three pieces of evidence, and he's just like, I'm going back to that van. <laughs> <laughs> Poltergeist, check. Yep. <laughs> check it. Fuck, my sanity was down to 25. <laughs> Good thing I got out of there. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, after some more uh, haunty stuff happened, uh, first the lights went out, and then it got cold, and then... Uh, then uh, th- th- a heavy piece of furniture made of oak floated up in the air and, and moved towards uh, uh, Diane. Um, what is this mystery furniture, by the way? Because um, they didn't say what it was. They just said it was a heavy piece of furniture. They didn't tell you what the piece of furniture was in the book. Okay. Uh, what I mean, it was made of oak. It was made of oak. So it was something it was made of oak. wooden. Um it floated towards her and pinned her against the stairs in what the book describes in too many words is firm yet Gentile. It was kind of Fifty Shades of Grayish. Uh, Mama Pritchard... Wait, it, it literally said Gentile? Or did it say Gentile? Gentile, because... gentile not uh, that, that oh, is me. Okay, because a Gentile is a very different thing. <laughs> yeah, a very me, different thing. Let me, I was, it was, I was, it was firm, fast. but gentile so a non-jew yeah it's firm and not jewish and you're like wait huh no they they just very sensually describe a firm gentle thing just holding this this teen against the stairs that's unsettlingly sexual yeah it, it was it was it was it that, was mildly that's disturbing comfortably sexual yeah it, it that that's why i said <laughs> And what the book used too many words to describe because it, it was uncomfortable the that how <laughs> much they wanted to paint that picture. Why? Yeah. Why? Uh, Mama Pritchard, Jean, uh, and Philip all tried to get it off her, but it would not budge. It wasn't hurt, hurting Diane, but resisting the effort of the rest of the family to pull it off of her. And again firm but gentle like they like they were stressing so hard it wasn't causing pain but it was refusing to allow her to move this is very gross like this feels gross to me yeah. i feel gross listening to this story. this is the lens th- th- of me like calling back the weird shit from this book even like uh, uh eventually she decided to uh, to stop resisting the force and just lay back and relax and as soon as she did the book, the, I, I, was, I don't know what it was. I'm saying bookshelf. I don't know what it was. Uh, came off of her. This uh, is deeply problematic to me for so many reasons. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, for it was, so it was, many it was reasons, great. this is problematic to me. Yeah. Uh, like, I don't think I can even, like, I don't feel comfortable explaining all the ways that this is a problematic story. Yeah, it's, there's a lot wrong with it. And it was a very, like, I used one, like, five sentences. The, the book has uh, more than those. Um, this is Freudian, to say the least. Yeah. The mom decided it was best for her to go to bed. As soon as they got into the room, the sheets flew off the bed and went into the corner of the room. The mattress then flew off of the bed, uh, and she fell to the floor with the mattress on top of her. That happened four times that night. I'd leave. I also would leave, yes. If this is real, I would leave. Yep. I'd go to a friend's house. Yeah, like the neighbors who you just were hanging out with not that long ago. For multiple hours. Yeah. Um, cut to se- uh, September 1968, a couple of reporters came representing different newspapers. Uh, Pontefract Poltergeist is back was uh, written in the Yorkshire Evening Post, and the story begins, uh, Mr. Nobody has turned uh, up at the home of 42-year-old, and again, why call it the lady's age, uh, Mrs. Jean Pritchard of East <laughs> well, Drive Pontefract he- for the, the first thing. time in three years. If, if, a, if a lady shows up in a paranormal story, you have to call out their age. You have to 
shit on their appearance. You have to do all these things because they had the gall to exist in a paranormal story. If it's a man, he doesn't need any of that. You just give a first name and don't even name the wife. Um, yeah, that's normal. Which is what most of the stories are for some reason. Uh, the yeah, it's weird. Pontefract and Castleford Express uh, wrote that Invisible Hands uh, Rock Family, and then it goes on to describe the destru- destruction of a grandmother clock, how Diane was repeatedly thrown out of bed, and also mentions that when Philip tried to record the noises, the plug uh, was pulled out of his tape recorder. Uh, meanwhile, the story ends with the Pritchard's home has become quite the attraction for amateur ghost hunters. Uh, several people have knocked on the door and asked if they could stay the night to listen for the ghost. Well, if the plug keeps getting pulled out of the tape recorder, you get a tape recorder that has a built-in microphone. Yes, batteries. That's that's the next step. Mm-hmm. I think those would have existed in 1968. I'm pretty sure they would have. Um, at this point in time, their house had a reputation... Uh, and amateur ghost hunters would frequently knock on the door, request access, but Mrs. Pritchard always refused. Um, when the weather was warm, large groups of people would sleep in their front yard, and Mr. Nobody would produce loud banging and crashing noises. That sounds very performative and very unverifiable. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> like, no, you can't come in. But if you stay here, you might hear something, and then they're just in there loudly banging on stuff. You see a sheet going across the window. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> it's, they're just mistaking, I mean, this is, like, this loud... is 68. Yeah, they're, they're... This is 68, so people don't, like... People don't have any standards whatsoever for what is fucked up and not. Oh, yeah. No, they're mistaking loud sex for a ghost. Possibly. Yeah. I mean, how old was Mrs. Pritchard? 42. Yeah, they're still fucking. They, yeah. Oh, they it's the weird 1968 stuff, too. Oh, yeah, that's the weird shit. Yeah. There's just, like, glitter and jelly everywhere. For some reason. Uh, luckily, Jean Pritchard bumped into an acquaintance named uh, Renee Holden, who just happened to be a bit psychic. And that when she... A bit? <laughs> yeah. And that's when she was invited over to the house. The next day she came by, she was shown around, and uh, she, she said the house looked as if burglars had been through them. So I, I just take that to be just messy. Uh, she yeah. would hang around uh, for nine months and be one of the primary witnesses to many of the events. Did she have a child in those nine months? Because that sounds like weirdly... That's a weird A weird period of, of time. That's also too long to have a psychic in your house. Yeah, I mean, that's too long to have most people in your house who are not yeah. a part of your immediate family. Yeah, that's... I mean, honestly, it's too long to have some immediate family members in your house, too. Let's be real. Yeah, yeah, that's that's approximately the period of time it took her to find another apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, the following Saturday, she came over for some chicken oh, sandwiches. Wait. It's England, so it would be a flat. Oh, uh, yes, a flat. Yeah. Um, do they? St- I think they still like get their th- like TVs registered. Do they still have to do that? There is a TV license you have to pay. Oh. Uh, there's a there's a whole thing. I, there's like a major joke about that in Doctor uh, Who. Doctor Who. I think there was also a pretty big one in the Mighty Boosh. Um. As well as one about the student loan like enforcers, student debt enforcers. Yeah. Did you know that the guy who played Vince Moon did like a bake a British Bake Off show? No. And he's he's older now, so it's weird to look at him and be like, "Oh, you're just being a normal person and not your character Vince Moon." Huh. Or or the IT goth. Yeah. <laughs> I like the IT goth. You know, we we made some homemade baileys yesterday because um as old close Greg. as you can get it. Yeah, we were even looking for like, um, not like not DOS boot, but like a ripoff of DOS boot so we could drink it from a shoe, but we were uh, unsuccessful in that endeavor. God damn it. Also, it turns out Bailey's so bad for you. Yeah, I mean, it's... Let's be real. It's mostly cream and condensed milk. Oh. And then you add chocolate syrup and Irish whiskey. Why? In some, like, almond extract. Why? It doesn't taste bad. 
But why? Who who was like, you know, it's a good mix. I'm gonna put whiskey, a bunch of cream, just so much cream, and then condensed and you know what? milk. Condensed milk. Oh wait, but also chocolate syrup because yeah. we're gonna have a chocolate. We're gonna have a chocolate milk while we're we're ingesting this alcohol. Yeah, it, it's 14 ounces. All right, here's here's a Bailey's recipe. 14 ounces of condensed milk, one cup of um, cream. Uh, two teaspoons each of vanilla extract and almond extract, two tablespoons of chocolate syrup, and one and a half cups of Irish whiskey. I want to vomit. It doesn't taste terrible. But I want to vomit. Yeah. That the, its description makes me want to vomit. I don't drink alcohol, as I think has been noted on this podcast before. Not not because for any reason other than I just don't drink alcohol. Yeah. Um, and, like... That sounds like burning throw up to me. <laughs> it's like a like a a milkshake that burns a little bit when you drink it. Yeah, that sounds like burning throw up. Yeah. <laughs> I love milkshakes. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm a milkshake boy. I'll go to a Stewart's and get my you know, yeah. myself a milkshake because Stewart's milkshakes are the best. 100%. If you're ever if you're ever in the tri-state area and you happen upon a Stewart's, get a milkshake. Yeah. That's, there's a Stewart's not far from my house, and it is. I just want. I never go inside of a gas sta- like unless I'm like I want milkshake. And then they're just the best milkshakes. Yeah. Oh no. The only the only gas stations I actually go into are quick Stewart's for Stewart's. milkshakes and quick checks for uh, really quick foods. And then there's like there's one gas station up in Rochester that I stop by all the time because. It was close to where my apartment was, and if I'm ever up in Rochester, I go to that gas station because I know what's there, and it's usually on the way to the thruway. And <sighs> oh, you know what? Back to Rochester. The, the Quick Check near my house now has heat lamp hot dogs, and I gotta say, actually pretty good. All beef uh, ballpark uh, heat lamp hot dogs, significantly better than the heat lamp hot dogs at the mobile station in Stone Ridge. Uh, that. It makes me nervous in the time of COVID. Oh, uh, they're 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 so they're in the bun is a hot dog in bun in plastic container. So it's not the oh, thing okay. where they're all like a bunch of them are just rolling around. Okay, 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 that's better because individually, I'm packaged. imagining I'm imagining like roller hot dogs and no, thank you. No, and no, I am a connoisseur you. of heat lamp hot dogs. I don't think that that's a thing you can be technically. It's really you eat them and then you prefer the ones that don't give you diarrhea. Yeah, that's that's more like it. I mean, I'd rather go to if I'm in Kingston and I want a hot dog, I'll make the trick the trek to uptown and get some Dallas. Dallas are good. They're so good. The this has been super regional once again. I mean, I talked about we've talked about two very specific gas stations. Oh yeah. At this point, if you can't figure out where each of us live, <laughs> By just what gas stations we frequent. Yeah, it's really kind of scary because, like, you could probably pinpoint where I live, like, pretty close now at this point. Yeah. If you listen to all the episodes of this podcast, you can find me. Yeah. And that makes me wor- a little worried. Yeah. Uh, I should just put up, I, I should I should get to level 40 in Pokemon Go and just put a gym, like, a, like put a poke, poke stop on my house at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the following Saturday, she came over for some chicken sandwiches, and she was in the kitchen helping make them when the lights went out, and Jean said, it's starting. Um, the book also mentioned that Joe was out at the bar with his friends at this time, and then the the lights just came back on. Cool. Um, but the pair of sandwiches on a tray uh, uh, brought them to the living room where Philip and Diane were watching uh, TV, and then the lights went out a second time. There was a large commotion, and then the lights came back on, and the tray was empty of sandwiches. What? Uh, after some searching, they found the sandwiches all had uh, were behind the television, and they had bites taken out of them. They observed that whomever had eaten the sandwiches had enormous teeth. I mean, Philip is a growing boy. He is a growing boy. Like, the lights went out, and it took just a bite out of every sandwich. Like, that's kind of a dick move. Yeah, and then threw him behind the TV. <laughs> yeah, and then threw him behind the TV. Uh, Mrs. Holden actually kept the sandwich for evidence, so she wrapped it up and took it away. 
Unfortunately, before she could present it to anyone, it had disintegrated into crumbs. Why didn't she take a picture? I don't know. I also think that might mean she she maybe ate it. I don't know. I mean, I'd probably... I'd cut around the bites, the bite marks, and still eat the sandwich. Yeah. Uh, I mean, depending on how dirty it was behind that TV. Yeah. I mean, That's does, the other thing. Does anyone ever really how clean did, behind their TV? How did they find it behind the TV? I'm conv- All right. So, like... I'm picturing it's like a console television where it's almost like built into the stand. But, yeah, that's what I'm thinking, too, because this is 68. It's not... But if it was in the corner, I'm picturing, like, there's a 90-degree angle, and then but... the... So there's going to be, like, a little triangle of blank space behind the, the TV. All right, wait. But let, let me put yourself in their shoes for a second. Very uncomfortable. You're being haunted. Yeah, very uncomfortable. You're being haunted by this poltergeist. Yes. Why do you think to look behind the TV for sandwiches? Because they disappeared. But, but like... I've never actually looked behind the TV for anything unless I think a cat might have taken it. See, that's the thing. Uh, unless there's a cat involved in this story, I don't understand why they'd look behind the TV. It's not where people look. It's not where normal people look, at least. No. Weird. Yeah, weird. Talking about weird, the following weekend, and I will insert this exactly as written in the book, the Pritchers had, had invited her local working men's club for a ladies' night, and Mrs. Holden had had her hair set. So she's inviting friends over to her have friends the local working men's club over to their house for ladies' night. I'm reading that as the Pritchers were invited to a local working men's club for a ladies' night, and Miss Holden was there to get her hair set up. Oh, I was picturing them inviting the working men's club over... And, then, and that's why you have a quagmire. And that's why quagmire I have a picture right of quagmire right there. That's a really small picture of quagmire. Yeah. Just... He was messing with the text for me. Oh, no. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> so you see why I made him the size he was. <laughs> Tiny quagmire. <laughs> Giggity. After Wait. the event. There we go. Uh, after the there event. There we go. All... I fixed it. You <laughs> By making it giant. Um, <laughs> oh, my neighbor's calling me, which reminds me, there's a black bear just that's been showing up. I mean, there's a lot of development in the area of Kingston, so maybe with their habitats. Yeah, because like one of the neighbors that saw on like their ring uh, one day and then the neighbor was out for a walk, the one that just called me and he's like behind my house neighbor. And he's like, yeah, it was just in my backyard. And I was like, what? And he goes, yeah, I shined the flashlight on him, and he ran away. Um, hmm. After the event, all the lights went out. Um, and then, still operating under my assumption, I put in parentheses, it sounds like all is going as planned so far. Um, it got loud, and pillows were covering people's faces. Still sounds like it's going the way I thought it was going to go originally. I mean, this sounds very eyes wide shut. Yes. Uh, when Joe flipped the lights back on, everything in the room was upside down. What is this, a fucking Pee Wee's Funhouse Playhouse moment? I think so. <laughs> um, the book kind of danced around it, but given the phrasing around this time, the kids started having diarrhea, uh, which I kind of love. That That's great. I mean... Everyone loves a little bit of cholera. Yeah. Um, so I, I posit that there is perhaps a swingers party and the kids ate the food that was left out. I accept this reality. <laughs> <laughs> this is fine by me. Yeah. I think this is okay. Um, f- following this, they tried to uh, converse with the horny ghost. They all joined hands, hopefully washed. Uh, in the no. hallway, and concentrated on making uh, leisure suits scary. I am very proud of that joke, by the way. Manifest. <laughs> you took you took away the, the impact of that. I mean, it's a great joke. It's a great bit. Yeah. Leisure suit scary is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, 
and uh, and were they successful? They heard a loud wind uh, followed by objects falling over. I'm going to which s- could be a loud wind. It could just be a loud wind doing what wind does. You know that kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to skip uh, ahead uh, a little now. Basically, the same stuff just keeps happening. Um, Joe's sister comes over and is skeptical, and then there's wind. Aunt Maud gets covered in milk. Um, they begin losing one item out of a pair, for example, gloves, socks, and they attribute it to Mr. Nobody. Um, the lights continue to flicker. The, also, the lights flickering could maybe because it's so damn windy. I don't know. Um, again, furniture is turned upside down. Food is found uh, outside of the normal locations where food would be found. Uh for some reason, after this incident... I mean, this just sounds like living with a teenager. It does sound like living with a teenager. Uh, for some reason, um, they all traded beds. Uh, what? They just swapped beds. I don't know why. Uh, so why is this called the... Have we established why this thing is being called the Black Monk yet? They like, have not. When okay. The, I, I rage quit shortly after they call it the Black Monk because I'm like, really? It took this long to get to this point? Um, some dialogue straight from a B-horror movie happens. Um, and after they go to bed, more spooky activity happens. This is the point where you can tell that I've, I've, I've given up on the I can tell that you've, you've kind of checked out. I'm reading... Yeah. I'm reading your copy, and it's very it's very brief. I, I read... I did read every line, and then this is the result. It's just me checked out, like, more of the same, more of the same, more of the same. Um, I can attest to the fact that you said more of the same several times in several text messages to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you, you were very upset about this story. <laughs> yeah. It, it was... It's so bad. It's, I you just, know what the, the the weird thing is? I think Astonishing Legends, a, a podcast that both you and I have listened to, had like three episodes on the Black Monkey uh, podcast. I don't, I don't recall. I don't think I explicitly listed them, but I think something I mentioned towards the end is that because I did find that they did do three episodes somehow on this. Yeah, like three full episodes. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. it's, uh, uh, mostly light and furniture based phenomena, uh, happen. Um, the, the ah, I'll have to forward you that text message. Um, a pair of hands had appeared at one point in time upon closer inspection. There were those of Aunt Maud, uh, including the missing glove from earlier. So like, what about Maud? What about Maud? She then threw a boot at the gloves, meaning that like the gloves were floating and then she threw a shoe at the floating gloves. Um, Jean then yelled at her husband's sister, um, who was a skeptic up until this point. Do you still think it's the kids doing it? Um, because now I guess it had explicitly targeted her. Then one of the gloves floated up and did the follow me, like the, ee, ee, the follow me gesture. Oh, come hither. Come hither. Um, when no one followed, the gloves beat fists into the air. Uh, Aunt Maud broke into a religious song, and the gloves began conducting to the music, which I love. I actually love what? that. This this is why this, I didn't like kind of skip this, like I did all the other stuff. Like she's like, ah. this is this is some Beetlejuice ass shit. It's exactly Beetlejuice stuff. Shake, 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 Shinora. Shake your body right. Yes. Um. At which point she said that she wouldn't stay there again for 200 pounds. Um, and also from 1966 to 2020 uh, is roughly uh, 49,000. That, that comma is clearly in the wrong spot. Uh, $496,000. Um, and that's only 54 years ago. Uh... That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. Also, yes. In reference to Beetlejuice, what do you think the odds are of us being able to get Michael Keaton or Winona Ryder to make an appearance on this if I say the name one more time? Um because I'm going to I like say- Winona Ryder a lot. 
And I'd like to talk to Renoda Wider. 67.9% chance, if you say it again, you will manifest either Michael Keaton, Winona Ryder, or some monstrosity of their bodies fused together from the summoning process. I'm assuming both the, the latter. I am too. Like a Philadelphia project, they're like weirdly merged into each other. Mm, what's it called? Cameo? <laughs> I'm seeing if Michael yeah. Keaton's got a cameo. That's how I got the hornswoggle. The hornswoggle? Uh-huh. Uh, she then burned the gloves. Um, after that this point, right. the haunting presented a new ability, uh, which is the interpenetration of matter, says the quote. So it, the ability to pass through things. Um, one day, the family was just sitting in the living room, probably planning their next swingers party, um, at which point an egg floated through the door and just fell to the ground. When it cracked, the room filled with the smell of a fresh garden, which reminds me of the TV sketch, the mad TV sketch where the guy can control the smell of his own farts and he can do everything but lavender. <laughs> What what happened? I think it was like a literal shit smell. Yeah, I think. Like the most vile smell ever. Yeah, yeah. Um, Gene then ran to the fridge, took all of the eggs out, and put them into a wooden box and sat on them. However, that did not prevent another egg from passing through its wooden prison and exploding into a cheap air freshener bomb. Um, (laughs) This happened for each egg. Uh, the author posited rather than them passing through matter that they perhaps temporarily changed dimensions. I mean, that's, that's the, uh, Occam's razor here. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. That's the real Occam's razor. Um, uh, <laughs> unfortunately I will not be saying the name of that goofy, goofy poltergeist one more time because I can't get Michael Keaton to do a thing cause he doesn't have a cameo. Oh, um, my favorite prank is the following. Um, it put jelly on the doorknobs and festooned them with lavatory paper. <laughs> is it fucking Justin McElroy? <laughs> that's, that's why I read that and I was so happy. <laughs> is Justin McElroy the black monk of Pontefract? Because it's taking <laughs> pranks right out of his playbook. <laughs> Just slap some jelly on it. Like, this this ghost clearly went forward in time, listened to my brother, my brother, and me, then went back in time just to put jelly on things. You gotta put jelly on it. Uh, Joe asked for her to, uh... Oh, sorry, then also ma- marmalade and mustard made an appearance, so I, it must have went through all the jelly. Oh. No, it's getting my bit. Yeah, J- Joe asked for Jean to go outside, uh... Uh, as written... Uh, as a good housewife, she tidied up the mess before she went back to bed. So, that's that's. I cool. mean, to be fair, I would probably clean up jelly on a doorknob. I would I too. To I probably would too. I, did I, I, tell I you, don't. I'm very excited. I just got a new vacuum cleaner because okay, the other yeah. one broke. It is the bomb. It's a new, a brand new Electrolux. Oh, you actually, you actually sprung for the Electrolux. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, it's pretty dope. It's got an electric. Um, attachment so you could like vacuum the stairs without having to pick up the whole vacuum it was pretty mm-hmm. great it's a uh, a very expensive vacuum yeah i mean nice vacuums are expensive yeah but they they, Luck- they last more or less 30 years before you need to start replacing parts on them yeah so you, you save money in the end because you don't have to buy this isn't being an adult exciting i get stoked about exciting. i get stoked about vacuums it's super exciting. Oh, yeah. Excuse my yawn. Yes. <laughs> at the excitement of talking about vacuums. Uh, were, were the 60s sexist? Yes. It's 2020. Yeah. Last week, did me and Erica wake up to the sound of a cat dry heaving and then just go back to sleep and decide it's a problem for whoever leaves for work last? Yes. Um, you monsters. Yeah. <laughs> I would absolutely <laughs> deal with that because then it gets like, you have carpet. <laughs> It's even harder to clean. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Oh my god. Oh my god, I would absolutely deal with that as soon as I heard it. No, that that <laughs> There was like us just sitting up in bed and you hear the sound of the cat dry heaving and then you're like careful listening and everyone um Try try to uh like 
uh, like, kind of rooting, like, you're like, just hold it in. Like, just, just be the heaves, but like, you're waiting for the sound and you're like rooting for the cat. Like, you got it, Scully. Don't bring it up. Don't bring it up. Don't bring it up. And then you hear that, like, the last, like, thing and you go, oh. That's... And then you hear the, the slight clatter of kibbles on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> and you go, oh, that sounds like a problem for whoever's, uh, wakes up last. Uh, the author also writes uh, verbatim, if Gene Pritchard had been in a, a an indifferent housewife who could ignore untidiness, um, Fred might have given up a great deal sooner. So he's, he's kind of saying that, like, he's blaming Miss Pritchard for her cleaning for the ghost making more messes. What? Like, it's making him mad that she's cleaning up his mess. Oh. When was this book written? In 2009. What? This book was written in 2009. Wait, are you fucking kidding me right now? No. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Did he just... What? Mm Mm-hmm. Did he just victim blame a woman for cleaning? He victim blamed a woman for cleaning, (laughs) but... The victim blaming is also ghost based. <laughs> uh, Vic Kelly, this one is Catholic. I don't know why I wrote that. That must come up at some point. I wrote this a while ago. Uh, spoke to his priest about. Oh, that's right. So Vic Kelly, who was Catholic, not the English uh, Church of England, England, spoke to his priest about the matters. Who he, he claimed is more informed, and um, of course, all Christian religions think they're they're the more informed one than the others. Um, I mean, all religions think they're more informed than the others. That's true. It, it's kind of a central tenet. Although I guess Shinto is a little more willing to accept other religions. Mm. So is Buddhism. Um, his hands were tied. However, he would need uh, to approach a bishop about the matters. But he did say that nothing was stopping him, Vic, that is, from sprinkling holy water and saying prayers. And uh, a layman is as good as a priest in exorcisms, I presume. Um, so I read matters as mattress. And I'm like, God damn it. Is Diane getting like <laughs> destroyed by a mattress again? Like at this point, picture the mattress like getting on the corner of the bed. Like it's climbing the corner ropes of a, a WWE arena and just like <laughs> doing the mattress version of like a flying elbow drop onto her. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Um, Vic headed to the Pritchard's house. Uh, from accounts, Gene didn't think it would work. Uh, but since he went through the effort, uh, they let him do his thing. He sprinkled... And now there's just water everywhere. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just wet. She's like, you know, everything's just damp now. Um, he sprinkled water in every room. And when he finished, uh, they asked, did Father Hudson say how long uh, it would be before they would know if it worked? Um and that very moment, there was a crash and water began to fall along the walls from the ceiling. Uh, I mean, the ghost, the, the poltergeist has great comedic timing. Th- th- it was really great timing. That's what you have to appreciate about this ghost. Yeah, it, it's it's got its timing down to, like, chef kiss levels perfection. Yes. Uh, until five o'clock in the morning, supposedly all the furniture was overturned. Uh, thumping just rang throughout the house, and Diane was also being thrown around the house. I like I like how Diane makes no appearance, like one appearance in the first episode. In this episode, she's just getting the shit beaten out of her. Unless she's getting just beat up by furniture, she's not in the story. <laughs> so what's your role in the story? Well, I was abused by the ghost and furniture. Yes. Uh- oh. Oh. <laughs> Um, then everyone went to bed without contacting anyone the whole time. Weird. Uh, in the morning, Diane was brushing her hair, uh, in front of the fireplace. Uh, I guess as small children do. Um, uh, uh, she was like 15 at this point. She started at 12, right? Yeah. I just so don't this is like think three should, years deep. I guess in l- the lack of a hair dryer, you brush your hair in front of the fireplace. I just don't know why you brush your hair in front of a fireplace. Because I mean, that I can understand. You have to That's go into the living weird. room. Um, it's not that weird. 
The dresser threw a drawer at the small of her back, I presume in an attempt to throw her into the fire. Oh <laughs> so, my God. Uh, so, I mean, if you go with the... the uh, hypothesis of what poltergeist activity is, right? Which is usually associated with someone going through puberty. Um, although in this case, it seems to be centered around <laughs> Philip in the beginning. You know, you know how uh, they always say that the the worst part of puberty is the urge for self immolation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, I've been there. Yeah. It doesn't get better. <laughs> All the people telling you it gets better, it doesn't. It doesn't. If you want to self-immolate in high school, you probably still want to self-immolate later. You've just lost the will to to do it. Yes. Uh, also, if you want to self-immolate, uh, I'm going to go back to my the thing I want to get into a scandal for at some point in my life. Uh, see a fucking therapist. Yeah. <laughs> Start early before you have a crisis because uh, when you have a crisis, it's really hard to find a fucking good therapist for you. Yeah. And that's that's John's moment of not joking and being dead serious in the middle of making jokes. <laughs> um, immediately after, uh, a cross hanging on the wall did the same exact thing and tried to drive her into the fireplace. This is like This is like a fucking naked gun movie in terms of level of like stupid pratfalls and like visual gags oh yeah um and then it was just stuck to her back as if by magnets and gene tried to pull it off uh earth wind fire and dirt fucking magic yep magics how do they work all that you know (laughs) yeah this was the last event until easter sunday when someone had seemed to have uh painted inverted golden crosses all over the walls uh, described as if using a stencil or and a can of spray paint, uh, such as the can the family intended to use to paint their bikes. Why are they spray painting their bikes? Okay, gold. I don't. That's you find that to be the weird part. <laughs> yeah. Well, t- fucking. All right. Here's the thing. I've already. I don't believe that this is a real poltergeist. Personally, surprise, surprise. My biases are coming through um because if it looks like it was sprayed with a stencil it was probably sprayed with a stencil yeah (laughs) because it's really hard to spray paint straight lines with uh with a a spray can and have it have sharp edges yeah so this is the thing that doesn't happen that's why you have to mask stuff it it probably was sprayed with a stencil upside down the occam's razor is not Oh, well, it had it had a stencil in an interdimensional space that it temporarily warped into existence so it could make these upside-down crosses, or it changed the way that the flow of the paint worked so it could paint these upside-down crosses. No, that's not how fluid dynamics works. <laughs> Are you sure? Because I think the author would think the latter, or the former, is... Uh, uh, I mean, clearly. But more likely. Clearly, because the... Because the the eggs fly through the wooden crate, so that's what they're going to do. I hate this story. <laughs> Upon contacting the local vicars, they were told to leave everything as it was, and I guess that was. Uh, and then there's just no further contact. They're just told to leave everything and kind of forget about it. Uh, and here's uh, where I leave off. Uh, <laughs> hang on. You- I, that, I'm going to delete this. I'm not, there is no part three. That's where I ended before okay. I kept going. I just never okay. deleted that part. Because um, I, I, I went back and I was like, well, let's just get this out of the way. Uh, during the next year, which is 1968 to 1969, the Pritchard's electricity bill was half of its usual size. They blamed Fred. Um, I blame maybe they were stealing electricity because there maybe weren't... I think they were maybe just stealing electricity or resetting That's, the meter because at that point in time they probably didn't have it, so you can't fuck with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, they blamed Fred. Also, like if you already have this big story going about your house, then it's more plausible you might be able to get away from telling the electricity company that your ghost has been stealing the electricity. Um, keys would go missing on occasion. Again, it's like losing a single sock. They're assigning that to the ghost. It's just forgetting where you put a thing. And they're they're all attributing this to to uh, a Fred or Mister Nobody, um, and at this point, 
uh, Mr. Body would show show himself for the first time. One night, whilst in bed, they saw a tall figure in a hooded cloak. The neighbors, uh, over the next few days, would say they felt the presence. Uh, the drumming noises became deafening, and it was at this point I decided to stop reading the book. Um, Did you actually? So, is there anything left in the story? How much is left? Um, it's it, it's that's the end of the book. So, the, like one of the last things that happens is they see a tall f- figure in a hooded cloak. And then there's just banging and stuff and more of the same shit that happens. So that's why it's called Wait. The Black Monk is because it's in a hooded cloak. The only time it shows Wait. itself. Years after but, the events start happening. But that's the end of the story? Yeah. That's deeply dissatisfying. Yeah, like, there's no, like eventually, like, there's just no more reports of stuff. There's no closure. There's no big whatever that happens. It's... In 1969, oh my God. they Th- see hooded that's figure. That's literally where it ends. Holy shit. <laughs> I-, I looked it up separately because I was like, is there any? There has to be something else. There no. has to be something else. No, I've got the book on Kindle. I'll share it with you. <laughs> like, that's it just kind of ends. That's fucking terrible. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's so... It's so tedious. Um, it's there's some other parts I like. It's very heavily biased by the author, who puts his thumb on the scale so hard he references other cases which involve flying cows. Um, like it, like it, it's it, it's it. It was very frustrating. <laughs> um, so this was a primary source for the astonishing Le- legends episode too. Yes, this it was. This book. Yep. What the fuck. How do they get three episodes out of this? I don't know. Like, it was so, like, there's no cultural or folkloric significance to any of this. It's at best a series of people, like, just sprinkling in life events to try to legitimize a bunch of made-up, you know, garbage. It's basically, like, a weird creepy pasta. Um... Like, including, like, everyone's, There's... like, even the author tried to, like, somehow monetize this garbage. So I'm looking through the Astonishing Legends one, and they got, like, a bunch of, like, shadowy pictures and shit that I, what the fuck? I don't get it. <laughs> Where did they find all these pictures? I only found one picture that was referencing it. How fucking long are these episodes? Oh, I did two hours. I did for the first episode. I did actually list call out "Astonishing Legends" by name in parentheses somewhere. That's that's six hours of podcast about the Black Monk of Pontefract. Yeah. How? How? Also, uh, I <laughs> oh, I, I ended this with. Uh... I could, sir, give you a verbal slap of the wrist and sniff of my taint. <laughs> I was so uh, mad at the end of this book. So, I I I went to the DailyMail.com because I thought that there were more pictures of this thing. And, like, all the pictures look clearly fake to me. Like, none of them look good. And this one here is supposedly of a mirror... And in the mirror, you can see the face of, like, a woman or something. I, it's but, somebody, like, but it, it looks like one of the mirrors. easily be a picture. Well, you know, they also make etched, etched mirrors where, like, you etch a piece of art onto a mirror. And it looks yeah. kind of like that. Yeah. So, like, I like I can't see any of the... Like, the reflection doesn't... It doesn't look like there's anything in the reflection. Like, it, other than that one thing. So, like... What the fuck? Yeah, like, if you just Google etch mirror art, you'll see basically, like, the exact same... A lot of wolves. Not, there, lot of wolves. There's one of, like, Wolverine. There's one of a bird. There's one of a tree. There's a lot of wolves. Right, I think that's just an etched mirror piece of art. So, that's, that, I believe, would explain all of, that. All of these pictures are terrible, I want to point out. Yeah. Like, and they're very, like... Like, I'm just clicking through it, and these all are very fake. <laughs> like, this this, this image right here, Brandon, I'm sending to you in in, uh, in Skype, maybe? Uh, Solid maybe. 
this is a very clearly fake image. Uh, like, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I could literally open up. I could literally open up. You could uh, open GIMP, GIMP right now and make a better, more convincing version of this image. Yeah. Once again, another one in the same vein. I could literally open up GIMP because here's the thing. Those two pictures are taken from the... That's Those are two identical pictures side by side. Yeah. Literally identical. All the lighting is identical. With the exception of, uh, was it the burn the, smudge tool that somebody could have used? Yes. Because, and this is from the, this is from the Astonishing Legends episode. Is They're it? literally the same picture. <laughs> it's literally the same picture. Yeah. Like, it's not different pictures. All of the shading is identical. You would have slight variations between the two shots. Yeah, no, so that's an actual, like, that's, the, the, there's that's a burn actu- tool. Uh, yeah, not, they wouldn't use smudge. They would use burn because it's smudge would they make would, it smudgy. That's just the burn yeah. tool. <laughs> that is literally just the burn tool. Maybe a little gauze and blur. Maybe. Yeah. Like. (laughs) (laughs) Like, this is so. There, yeah. (laughs) I'm just happy. I used to love ghost stories, but I hate them so much now that I'm an adult. And, like, they're all. They all follow the same fucking formula. Yeah, I, I I like the monster stories more than the ghost stories. I mean, at least the monster stories are, like, I'm not going to say plausible, because I really don't think they're plausible. A lot of them are plausible, but, you know. They're more relatable, I think. I think they're more relatable. I think they're more relatable. Because they definitely, they, 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 they touch on things, and they go back to, like, I think all this just goes back to our uh, uh, fascination with um, cryptids in, like, scholastic school year area age times yeah well i i mean i got this like i I might do an episode on it if i still have the book um from let me see (laughs) Uh uh-oh john's john's doing some looking for stuff oh he's doing a reach and he's wearing a fantastic mystery science theater 3000 shirt yes i am because i uh oh there's a hole in this of cats because cat claws get into my shirts and slowly have been eroding all of my clothing um i i i was a kickstarter backer for the uh the revival my name's in the back of one of the episodes because i gave an ungodly amount of money to kick to kickstart mystery Indeed. science through 3000 and i was working for ibm at the time so i had disposable income yay disposable uh, income yeah, I don't have as much of that right now. Which was it the God not Godzilla episode? Like it the was big the, spooky monster one or I wish it was, but it was the uh Journey to the Center of the Earth episode. One. Ah, gotcha. Okay. I was in the I was in the ending of that. I still uh, love that you had queued up for one time when it came over to show me the one with the Native American and there is just to be like, Brandon, look at this. And one you could see like shot collars on the animals in the woods that Yep, <laughs> that was great. We could all see like he was in like Native American face, red face. Yeah, I would call it. Yeah, it was just because because it face. was he would literally had he literally had a red body paint on his body. Yeah, it was it was wild, disgusting, wild, disgusting is what it was. And I love like that. I just loved. I was it a bear or like a mountain lion like hops onto a log and there's just the, the it's not even like they had like the actual big part visible well like they could have at least rotated it so it just looked like it had a collar but you saw the shocky bit <laughs> yeah it was it was also all the animals in that movie i forget what the name of the movie was i'm looking it up right now um all the animals in that movie were very 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 clearly drugged out of their fucking minds yeah like very clearly. That's why those movies noticeable. are the best. <laughs> huh? So that's why those movies are the best. Best. Wait, is it over? Did they... Are they not doing another season? Did fucking Netflix cancel it again? I don't know. <gasps> those bastards! 
Well, they still do, um, not Mystery Science Theater 3000, but the other, um, the, uh, Rift Tracks. Well, that's not, that's not Mystery Science Theater 3000, that's separate. No, but it's still, like, you get the same commentary. Yeah, but it's, it's Crow and, uh, what's his name? It was canceled. Ah. Uh... <laughs> this is just John B. Sad time. I put so much money into it. Oh, you know what? They did a riff tracks on the Octo Man. I'm so upset right now. Like, I need to mourn. <laughs> why did you? Why? Why do you do me dirty like this, Netflix? Why you do me dirty? Why are you doing me dirty like this? I love that series. You motherfuckers. They'd... I want more Crow T robot and more. Yeah. I still. Uh, Rift Track still feel, fills that void for me, though. But it's. I like the trappings of Mystery Science Theater 3000. I like the rapping story. I get, yeah. No, I get it. I'm just. I How did I not know that for a year? I was. I'm so far behind. <laughs> Rest in pieces, my beloved goofy ass riffing series. I'm really upset because Jonah Ray was actually funny too. So I like, yeah, they, well, they were all good. They had Jonah Ray, they had um, Felicia Day, uh, Patton Oswalt. Yeah, I like that I'm whole just, crew. I'm just sad now. Stranger Things, Mystery Science Theater 3000 riff. What? 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 They did a riff of, I think, the intro for... Oh, for Stranger, Stranger Things. Things. Yeah, they did... Uh, yeah, I'm they just did. scrolling through what Rift Tracks has now. They have a lot of stuff. Yeah, they did um, Jurassic World, uh, Rise of Skywalk. Like, the whole reason they did Rift Tracks is so they didn't have to pay... Yeah. To, ...for, like, big movies. Yeah. Like, that's the whole point of Mystery Science Theater 3000, is it, it was... um. They, they, they were only things that they could afford to do. That's true, but they also, like, they also edit the movies, too, for... True, they cut like, them down. Well, for commercials they cut them down and, for, and regular yeah. stuff, except the Netflix one wasn't cut to be around commercials because there are no commercials, which is nice. They, cut it, they, they did cut around in it, though. They did, yeah. Because, like, honestly, some of those films are so bad that, like, I wouldn't actually want to watch uncut versions of them. No. Um like as a rule, like some of the some of the like infinite Conan the Barbarian knockoffs that exist, I would never want to watch without being cut down in a million years. <laughs> uh, but anywho, let's do let's do the plug section cuz I guess we're done with this fucking terrible story. Yeah, which um, just ends. <laughs> Yeah, I, apparently people still go to the house because there's a yeah. fuck ton of pictures, which is weird well, to me. Well, story but... about the the house that I, th- uh, I believe that someone made a movie about the black monk of Polterfract hunting, and they also bought the house so they could shoot the movie. So I think, but I think that might have been a director or producer. So I think the director or producer of the black monk of Polterfract movie. Is the one that owns the house? It's called When the Lights Went Out. Yeah. According to Gene, da da da, Ledge Pooh Network Fred, Pritchard's daughter Diane was supposedly dragged upstairs by her neck. Okay. They embellished the story to make it fit into a more horror movie template. <laughs> What the uh, the mystery sandwiches weren't spooky enough? <laughs> On Rotten Tomatoes, the film holds an average approval rating of twenty two percent. Oh, good. Seems good. Yeah. Premiered at Rotterdam International Film Festival. Um. All right. Well, enough of that terrible story that apparently some podcasts deem fit to make. Literally six hours worth of content about. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah. Which uh, I just I honestly I can't get over that. Six hours about this story? Yeah. Like the uh, the majority of it has to be commentary about things I imagine. It, well, I think a lot of it's discussion. I, I listened to it the, back in the day. There's not so I think a lot of it's six hours worth of content in their source. Like, I think they're talking about like the concept of polar guys as a general thing. Yeah. And they're using the story as a thing. But, like, the concept of polar guys as well is very easily explained to... Because most of the evidence of, like, poltergeist activity is things that could have literally been faked by someone jumping on a bed or attaching a string to something. Yeah, or rubbing jelly on a doorknob. <laughs> Dude, that's the most compelling piece of evidence in the whole story. It is. Let's be real. Um, Because that indicates that they traveled forward in time and stole Justin McElroy's patented prank technique. Indeed. Because they don't just hand patents out. No. Except they kind of do. They do, but it's expensive. It's expensive. If you have the money, they'll hand it out to you. Yeah. Well, the first case in point, IBM. The um, the the my coworker had had a pen, but he couldn't hold it because like the first payment is I forget how much, and then there's the second one that's more because they assume that you're making money with it, and the third one is like incredibly large, so he had to give up his patent. Mm-hmm. Which was he he made some sort of form of system that um prevents the hose on ventilators from being pulled out of people's uh, faces like a while ago. Oh, wow. Because I guess like that can accidentally happen sometimes where they just pull the tubes out of you. I mean, if I've, if I've learned anything from watching movies that take place in a post-apocalyptic setting and someone wakes up in a... in the middle of a hospital, uh, they can... you can tear... Uh, IVs out real easy, easily, and you can tear ventilators out really easily. If I've learned anything from those movies, yeah. Um, so with no negative impacts on your body whatsoever. <laughs> no, whatsoever. Every no, that's that's the fact. They wouldn't show it in the movies if you couldn't do it. I'm telling you. Yeah. Oh, fun thing about movies. Just so people are, I think you're aware. Be. The the based on a true story thing doesn't actually mean it could be a hundred percent fiction. The idea is that that just sets the tone of the movie. It doesn't actually have to be a true statement. What? You telling me that they would lie in a movie? Yeah. <laughs> What is this world coming to? Are people going to start lying on the internet next? They can't lie on the internet. Oh, thank God. That's how I know the earth is only 200 years old and only exists because of me. Yeah. Well, you're 200 years old now? No, but I've decided that's how old the earth is. And since things only exist because I perceive them, uh, that means I get to decide the actual age of the earth. Well, shit. I guess that's true. Anyways, this has been Cryptopedia. <laughs> our website is CryptopediaCast.com. Our Twitter and Instagram are at CryptopediaCast. If you want to email us, CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. Although I will say getting in contact with us through the, the Discord is probably the quickest way you're going to get responses on any of that. True. Um, we have a Patreon. I think it's my turn to thank our jackalopes who are Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party. Bird Schneider, Jonathan Shepard, and the Thomas Granger buggery thing. <laughs> uh, I forget what the whole the, the full whole list. I did have, not include the full list of have, animals. We we just have Thomas Granger on here. It's a thing from the Discord talking about the number of animals that he buggered. Uh, where is it? Uh, Hung 1642 for buggery with a mare, a cow, two goats, diverse sheep, which means he did a lot of sheep, uh, two calves, and a turkey. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the, the crazy thing is he got a mare. And if my time in Phasmophobia has taught me anything, that is, that is <laughs> rather difficult. God damn it. Uh, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> we have a Facebook group, which... People have been joining a lot, or not joining, but they've been liking our page on Facebook a lot, which surprised me. Uh, we have a Discord, as I mentioned before. Check the show notes for that. 
Uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send them. Just know that there is a long outstanding request for the Wendigo to happen that I have been directly uh, to my face digitally uh, questioned on where the status of that Wendigo episode is. And there are circumstances behind that at Wendigo episode, as has been discussed offline. Yes. The- if you know anyone, if you know anyone who is from a tradition, a cultural tradition in which the Wendigo exists, or if you, in fact, are from a cultural tradition in which the Wendigo exists as a part of the fabric of your culture, uh, message me and get me in contact because I am very, very anxious about covering the Wendigo because we are two of the whitest human beings that have ever existed on the planet Earth. And uh, the Wendigo is more or less a metaphor for the destructive force of white European men. <laughs> yes. We do have a spreadsheet and we have the the, the episode slot for for the Wendigo. Yeah. And we just skipped over. So so if you actually look at our episode numbers, they're one we're missing, an we're missing one. <laughs> and that's the Wendigo. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is uh, brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. My Instagram is at mu2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com. And his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. And once again, I found him roaming my local Hannaford. Hey-o. Hey. Uh, as always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. Weird. <laughs>